So in this video, I'm going to talk about the gear that you're going to need to start a real estate photography business. Now, if you're already in the business, maybe I'm going to give you some other tools and ideas and suggestions that you might want to upgrade or switch to, which I have done in the past. The things that I started with, I have grown and manifested into the gear that I have now. So let's get going. The first thing you're going to need, probably the most important tool that you're going to need for interior real estate photography is a tripod. Now I've gone through several of these. I started out with the junk ones from Walmart and they're too they're not stable enough. First of all, you need something that's heavy duty and stable, but not super heavy. I mean, you don't have to go overboard. But the brand that I love and I found that is last of the test of time and the abu abuse that I put things through is Manfrotto. And I'm talking more specifically the 190X. Now, there is another option, and I will leave uh, a link in the description for that one too. But this one is super common. This is a heavy duty one. Flip out the uh, legs just snap out like that super fast I don't really care for the twisty legs that just takes too much time but again that's my personal preference I uh, let me see what is this one I got my eBay account I've dumped everything in here pretty much new you can get this for 220 bucks okay and the total amount of everything I'll put up at the end but again there's gonna be variables like with the camera and stuff but so the next thing that you're gonna want is a nice good solid tripod head now, a lot of guys in the industry are going to the gearhead. They have been for a while since this came out. This is a Benro. Let me show you right here. This is the Benro GD3WH3 gearhead. I didn't think I was going to like it, but I because I was going with like the pistol grip kind, and as soon as you let off, it wouldn't be... I mean, it, your image might shift. With this one, you can fine-tune it by just turning a knob in three directions. And you can do a vertical uh, shot, too, with this. So, absolutely perfect. It has a leveler on it, but I use my in-camera leveling. But if you have never used one of these gear heads before, you, don't, you have no idea what you're missing. They are phenomenal. They're actually super fast once you get the hang of them. Once it becomes muscle memory on which one is your vertical, horizontal, and panning, and all that stuff, it's, it's just so much better. It's like probably the best uh, tripod head I have used. Not for video, because you can't pan... Obviously, you're not going to want to turn a knob to pan, so for video, no. But for photos, when you just need to lock on and get your, your vertical and horizontal lined up and fine tune micro details, there's nothing that beats the gearhead. Prove me wrong. You can't. So, let that leads us to the camera. Now, I'm actually filming this video on the GH5 Mark II. Yes, that's micro four thirds. And there's a whole reason why I decided to go from a full frame Sony camera down to micro four thirds. The reason because it's a lot easier to get everything in focus and with that two times crop factor that comes along with having a micro four thirds camera, that also means that your f-stop is also a two times crop, but the amount of light that you get coming into the sensor is the same f-stop. So for example, right now I'm filming on f2.8. So my exposure, whether I'm on full frame or micro four thirds would be the exact same shutter speed and ISO on a full frame at 2.8. But the micro four thirds camera depth of field is acting as though it is a F5.6 because it's two times crab. It's just like you're punching in. So that's the one reason why I went with uh, micro four thirds. So the other reason is because the stabilization on the micro four thirds system is phenomenal. If you've never held a GH5, GH5 Mark II, even the Olympus lines, you, again, you don't know what you're missing. It's it's a completely different game when you go from full frame to micro four thirds as far as stabilization. Yes, my, full frame stabilization is getting really good, but nothing compared to what micro four thirds can do. I can literally walk and film with it almost looking like a tripod, but you put this on, or I'm almost looking like you're on a gimbal but you put this on a gimbal walking through a house it's amazing so that's one of the reasons so the price of the GH5 Mark II if you're curious it's 1300 bucks new good luck finding a full frame that 
with the same amount of video quality. So you get 422 10-bit with the GH5 Mark II. And again, I'm not going to go into too many specs with this because that's going to be the, one of the variables. You're going to have to decide what camera is best for you. But like I, I say, you want to get an all-in-one solution if you can to, when you're first starting out. And again, I, re I recommend having um, two of everything eventually, you know, because what if you drop your camera and all of a sudden you're on site and now you're out of luck. You have to, you have to quit. <laughs> you have to go home. What are you going to do? Uh, use your cell phone, you know? So that's why I have, well, I'm a wedding filmmaker too, so I have five different cameras. But with that being said, you know, you can get a brand new GH5 Mark II for 1300 bucks. And now let's talk about lenses. Again, this is also going to be depending on what camera you decide to go with. But if you do decide to go with Micro Four Thirds, I, and even full frame, because I was running the Leawa version of this on full frame, but this is the Leawa 7.5 millimeter f2. And again, that would be a 15 millimeter. I wouldn't go much wider than 15. But the nice thing about these Leawa lenses is they are zero distortion. So once you get them into Lightroom and put your color, uh, your, your, uh, your um, lens correction profile on there, boom, it's like perfect there's no bowing around doorways or anything even with video you can walk right through a doorway with this and it's the doorway frames are perfectly straight up and down that's why i went with the Leawa. so the other accessory that you're going to want to get grab for your lens is a circular polarizer what circular polarizers do is yes it adds a little bit of a tint but only in certain parts of the frame so when you spin the circular polarizer you are able to control glare, for example, in parts of the frame. They're used a lot on for water to take out glare on top of the water. You can pull glare out of hardwood floors, out of TVs, things that... When you're doing the flambient method, you're going to want to get as much of that glare out of the floor as possible. So when you're blending back in your ambient layer, you're not blending in a ton of glare. You're able to use that ambient layer. And it just makes your images look so much better. And if you're into ph photographing cars, vehicles, you can shoot right down the side of a vehicle and adjust and completely get rid of all that reflection out of the side of a vehicle. So that's pretty cool. All right. <clears throat> Let's move on to your flash setup. So if you do and learn the flambient method, you can run and light up an entire room with only one flash. And if I had to tell you to get, if you could only get one flash, that would be the Godox 8200. This is gonna be the equivalent of having about four regular speed lights as far as power output goes. Because your average speed light is measured in about 50 watt seconds of power, this is 200, hence the 8200 name. So, you're gonna need a trigger for that, which is gonna sit on the hot shoe of your camera. This is the Godox X Pro. Super easy to use, really quick functions as far as you know, just hitting what channel you're on and making your corrections. But if you have this on top of your camera, you can dial your and control everything from the Godox 8200. <clears throat> and that'll make, that way if you're not near the camera, which I don't, I recommend you ch touching your camera the least amount as possible because you don't want to have to deal with too much camera shake and getting your images all off in alignment so 8200 we're looking at where is it the trigger is 70 bucks and then this flash is brand new 330 dollars you can find them used I recommend just going new with stuff like this, only because one of the flaws with the 8200 is the switch. Now, that's why I recommend once you start doing this, for example, if you can remember this, get your flash turned on and leave it on for that day, because right now I'm trying to turn mine on and it's not going on. It takes me a couple times. These switches go bad in these, so eventually I'm probably going to have to junk this or send it in to get it fixed if that's even possible. I haven't looked into that. But if you do have an 8200 and you know for a fact your switch is going bad and you've had it fixed, leave me a comment below. Let me know. Because, see, I can't even get it to turn on right now. I know that's not a good sell on the 8200, but like I said, I have when I first started out, I was probably turning this on and off, you know, with every different, with every shot. So that's probably why it's not working right now. Um, <clears throat> now, as far as modifiers go for your flash, I recommend the mag mod 
brand mag sphere and it comes with and I'll show you on the Godox V1 that I have it has these rubber seals that go around your flash and then all you can do is pop that on so I leave this the the rubber magnetic part on the flash all times so if you're in a room with wood ceilings and you can't just bounce off the ceiling take one of these hold it about head level and just fire the flash into the room and it's going to throw flash and light everywhere and you can still do your multiple composites with this but this is a lot more convenient a lot faster and a lot smaller profile than walking around with a huge umbrella so that's what I do I recommend this this thing works amazing all right one of the biggest parts of your business if you're gonna get into real estate photography is gonna be drone photos drone video uh, and I recommend the Mavic 2 Pro. I know they've come out with the Mavic 3. I actually recommend that as well if you're just getting started, if it's within your budget. What is the price right now of the Mavic 2 Pro? Fly More Combo. This one is used for 800 bucks. He's selling a couple batteries, the case with it, and everything. Again, I'm on eBay right now. Shop around. But I wouldn't go too cheap with your drone. Make sure you're getting above 12 megapixels the Mavic 2 Pro is 20 megapixels and here's why for real estate in general it doesn't matter you can shoot 12 megapixels 5 megapixels for all it matters but if you get into uh, you're gonna be able to open up the door for more opportunities to sell prints down the road you know a realtor might ask you for a print of somebody's house is to give them a gift and other companies might want to use them as art on their walls and as I just got a job the other day shooting uh, local scenes with my drone to put up in their business and so I feel confident with 20 megapixels they're gonna be able to blow that up pretty decent size and also selling prints to the locals in your area or tourists I do that all the time so make sure you don't skimp out on the drone DJI is the industry leader right now you don't want to go with anything too cheap with the drone I don't know any other brands I can't comment on them everybody loves DJI they do they just work I've never had an issue I've never had a flyaway issue I've had a disconnect from the remote in the you know the signal like twice in three or four years and it was probably due to the cable coming undone or loose so the other thing too is why actually going back to uh, my GH5 Mark II is why I actually switched from using the Olympus EM1 Mark II to the GH5 Mark II, and you can watch some of my tutorials out there that I've that I have doing full tutorials on-site training with um, the camera app that comes with the GH5 Mark II. Almost every camera now has an app that goes along with it, so you're able to control the camera right from your smartphone. And I bought this uh, lanyard, this case. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I bought this case for my smartphone so I can just hang it around my neck so I'm hands-free. I can walk around the house. I can adjust my camera if I need to. And then I got my cell phone right here. Cr do my settings. Lift my flash up. Hit the trigger on the camera. You can review your images before. And the nice thing about the Panasonic app, as opposed to the Olympus app, is that the app is a lot faster, a lot more responsive, because that's the last thing you need is on site. The app is taking forever for you to review the photos, or it's it's not, it's misfiring all the time, or it's just, that will just drive you crazy, and it'll be a super waste of time. So look into that when you're shopping for a camera. Just the functionality that watch tutorials on them, you know, uh, are they really good at video? So you want to have, you know, a good video camera and a good photo camera, something with good stabilization you know does it have a good app with it all that stuff so I believe that is about it the only other thing is you're gonna need a case to put all this stuff in and I have been using for a while I don't you can't see it here I'll leave a shot up on the screen right here of the the Godox 8600 you can buy just the case and it happens to be the perfect case. I can fit all this stuff, my drone in there, my flash, lenses, camera, all the extra gear, all the tools, extra batteries, all that stuff, which we didn't discuss. You're going to need extra batteries for everything. But the case alone, just for the case, here it is, 6348. I mean, you can't find a better case. It comes with a shoulder strap. Now, if you get this weighed down too much, yes, it will rip. Uh, 
And I have I have about four of these things, which I put all my lighting gear in for other things, uh, miscellaneous stuff, just because it comes with all the compartments. Leave me a comment below if you have any other suggestions for any other gear. But uh, again, I appreciate you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next uh, video. Bye-bye now.